we're going to move into a time of uh, hearing God stories. Here at the Vineyard, when we, do, uh, uh, when we do baptisms, we invite those who are being baptized to share just a little bit of their story with God. And it's a powerful moment. And then uh, we'll share those, and I'll talk about how they'll get baptized here in just a minute. And so I'm going to invite our three folks up. Olivia, Cameron, and Ellie, come on up. Olivia, you're first. Everybody say hi, Olivia. <laughs> hi. Um, when I was told by God I needed to be rebaptized, it was the clearest connection with God I had ever made. It was at middle school camp, and I was receiving prayer on the last night when I started sobbing. I was told that night that I needed to be rebaptized again. God had said, You need to be rebaptized in my name. And that night I knew I needed this. Before I had heard the word of God, I was following the wrong path, and I knew it. And I wasn't sure that God had a plan for me. But now I have a, no need to worry, because tonight God will guide me and my family on the right paths again. I'm confident that God is constantly changing um, mine and the people I love's lives, and I know that he is always with me and, me and my mom especially. I pray for her constantly and hope God is guiding her in the right direction, and I pray that she is always with God. I am hopeful and grateful that God will lead me to be, the, uh, to be an amazing person. Nice. All right, Cameron, come on over. Everybody say hi, Cameron. Cameron. Are you nervous? It's okay. They're not going to yell at you. It's going to be okay. Hi. Uh, my first time with God was when we visited uh, an uncle of mine down in Virginia, which they are God-loving people. They asked us to visit or visit their church with them, and we did. And that was where I met God. After so, I didn't follow with the church. I didn't read the Bible. I just went about my life believing that he was there, and he was guiding me through life the best as he could. So time went on. Life got difficult, and I decided that it was time to go and find my place. We came to the vineyard, and I felt amazing. The people here were so kind and didn't make me feel pressured to do anything that it wasn't in my own abilities. So that's where my God career stands now. And I'm sorry. And after we came here and I found the people that were as nice and as caring as you guys have been, I have decided that it is time to devote and to live my life more godlike. That's good. <laughs> Turn to your neighbor and say thanks for being nice. Like you all played a part in that. Thanks. All right. Well, here we go. Ellie, come on over. Everybody say hi, Ellie. Hi. Don't say it too loud. Ellie and I were just talking, and her hope was that she wasn't going to puke. Yeah. <laughs> There's a whole bunch of people right now rooting for you not to do that, so now she, she's going to be okay. Hi, guys. Um, <clears throat> so I grew up in and out of different churches and youth groups until I graduated high school. After high school, I found myself hanging out with people who didn't claim religion, didn't have a relationship with God, and um, during that time, I started drinking very heavily, and I drifted away from God. I became very depressed, very angry with the world, with God. I blamed him for bad things that had happened to me, and after years of drinking and relying on drugs to make myself feel better, I decided to come back to church and with Cameron and my kids, we started coming back to the vineyard and just the feeling of a weight being lifted off of my shoulders, even after just one service, really showed me that uh, this is where I'm supposed to be. This is the path that I'm supposed to be on. And I find myself with a longing for Christ with a 
urge to just come to church as much as I can and be involved and show my kids who God is and what he can do for them and how they can make a good choice staying in a church and following with him. That's awesome. Thank you. And so I'm going to invite, we have three baptisms, Megan, Gavin, and Andrea, come on up. I'm going to grab the microphone. Here, I'll grab this. Megan, you can follow me. Everybody say hi, Megan. Hi, Megan. She's not nervous at all. No. Okay. Um, I'm Megan, obviously. Um, My life before Jesus was filled with bitterness, anger, hurt, and sadness. I was in a dark place and turned to alcohol as a way to cope. My depression took over my life, and I isolated myself from family and friends and just felt like giving up every day. I threw myself into work to avoid the issues in my life. In December, after trying for a few months, my grandma talked me into giving Vineyard a try. I came to my first service and honestly played on my phone for most of it, but something kept bringing me back. At the end of January, something in the message caught my heart, and I knew it was time to let the Lord do his work, so I recommitted myself to him. Since then, since then, I am a more positive person. I spend more time with my family, and my suicidal thoughts and depressive episodes are non-existent. I wake up grateful every day, looking forward to seeing the things he has planned for me. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Gavin, come on over. Everybody say hi, Gavin. Hi, Gavin. So as a little bald baby, I was baptized. So when I found the desire to get baptized again, I got a little bit scared. A few years ago in the depth of my depression, I found a Christian therapist who was able to help me regain my confidence in myself and in God. I wrestled with God. Could I get baptized again? Would that be a smack in the face to God? Did I not have enough faith that baptism was exclusively a one and done thing? My counselor showed me that it is okay, in fact. It is okay that baptism is a recommitment to follow God. Leave your sin and walk with God. Okay, I'll do it. So for three years, I asked all these questions. I walked through pornography because I desperately needed to be filled by something heavenly, something real and eternal. I chose God over my sin and accepted him as my Lord and Savior. I'm still a sinner but I'm still a child of God. I already recommitted my life to Jesus years ago as that little bald baby. Then again, when I was walking with Jesus through therapy, and I do the same thing today, give my life to Christ with a twist, I'm telling you. Andrea, come on over. Everybody say hi, Andrea. Hi, I'm Andrea. Uh, I was also baptized as an infant and raised by Christian parents. So the seed was planted when I, but I strayed from my path and relationship with Jesus. I got pregnant and had a baby at 16 and started a family with a non-believer who emotionally and physically hurt me. I, uh, sorry. I lived in fear and lost sight of who I was as a person. After my divorce, I started talking to Jesus again, prayed. Then after getting remarried, my husband and I found the vineyard. I found strength to fight my fears. I found peace to settle my worries. I've started rebuilding broken relationships and now know that Jesus is with me every day. Since reconnecting with Jesus, I've also changed careers. I now work in the emergency, emergency department and I'm going back to school to get my nursing degree. I thank God for this purpose and the people in my life who have led me here. So we've got two uh, stories this morning. The first is from Zoe. Everybody say hi, Zoe. Hi, Zoe. Don't be nervous. Should I start? Yeah, you can go ahead. Okay. It's going to be okay. Uh, so my name's Zoe, uh, as I told you. Um, this is my testimony. 
This is really. You can do it. Okay. <laughs> Here, before you start, let's pray. So God, we pray for Zoe that this testimony would be powerful. God, give her the air to breathe what you have done in her life because it'll be great. Ooh, okay. So I grew up going to church with my mom, but I never really had faith in Jesus. Um, I always knew that Jesus was by my side, but I always like went to the bad path. Um, by 14, I had already fallen into addiction and gotten arrested and had failing grades. On May 4th, 2021, I found out I was pregnant. I knew I needed to change my ways. I knew I needed to do better for my son. I started coming to youth group every Wednesday and I got invited to a church camp. That weekend was so changing for me. I gained so much faith and that's when I knew I needed God. He was there for me. Now, present day, 16 years old, as I've grown in my faith and God has directed me through tough times, I graduated two years early and have had an amazingly cute son. Now, I'm going, for, I'm going to school for law enforcement and I want everyone to know that it's never, ever too late and God loves you no matter what. And from this baptism on, I will choose God, live God, and love God. <laughs> That, that was pretty good. All right, Bob, come on over. Everybody say hi, Bob. Hi, everybody. My name is Bob Sullivan. Uh, before, uh, my life before Christ was vanity. I had an important job. I lived in a big house in Chicago, and I had many fancy things. However, the job, the house, and the things owned me, not the other way around. I was eating the bread of sour, sorrows. In early 2019, I lost my big job and was forced to make some life changes. These included moving to a cheaper part of the country, Omaha, Nebraska, and starting my own business. However, I was still relying solely on my own power, and all the stress remained. The business also didn't start going so well, and we were running out of savings. On October 15, 2019, I publicly submitted myself to Christ at Love Church in Omaha. Every day, I thank God that he chose me before the foundation of the world and led me to him right when he did. The first thing they took from me was the stress of things outside of my control and started a sanctification work in me. A year later, I was praying in the spirit and God told me to give away all our possessions, sell our house in Omaha and move into our camper. I hesitantly told my wife the idea and she immediately agreed. Within a month, we purged most of our possessions and hit the road. We were, we, we, there were many blessings out of this act of obedience. Then, last year, I was fasting, and I heard from God that our calling was to be generous. I'd never really given to any cause, really, before then. My wife and I started giving to multiple churches, funding mission trips, and really helping people in need. Since then, our blessings have exploded, just as he promised in Malachi 3.10. Even though things are still hard sometimes, I'm now continually filled with the joy and the peace from the Lord. Recently, it's been on my heart to get baptized and share my testimony with you all. Every day, God finds a way, it finds a way to ask me, do you trust me? And my goal is, every day is to show him I do. All right, I'm going to invite the three to come over to the baptism tank. I'll explain what's going to happen uh, next. We're going to get them ready and, and uh, give them a little bit of last-minute instructions. A couple of people are going to be in the baptismal tank, and uh, we're going to ask them three questions. Now, we've already asked them these three questions, but we'll ask them again while they're in the tank. The questions are this. Do you believe that Jesus is the Savior of the world? And they've answered previously, yes. Do, they, do you think that Jesus is your personal Savior? And they've answered, yes. And then the final question is, to the best of your ability, for the rest of your life, will you follow after Jesus with all your heart? And they've answered, yes, already, but we'll ask them again. And then we'll baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You all get to watch, participate, maybe take a picture or two, and celebrate with these three folks. So I'm going to pray, and we're going to move into baptisms, and we'll worship alongside that. So Father, we thank you for lives 
that have been marked and changed. And so God, tonight we celebrate, we celebrate those lives changed, what you have done in each one of them and how that could potentially have a ripple effect for generations, God. So we pray more of that and Holy Spirit come. In Jesus' name, amen.
I'll point to that empty grave. 